Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability, which are essential for a reliable and safe supply of electrical energy. So the essentials for a resilient electricity system are two focuses. One is energy as a global quantity and the other one is power as a local quantity. For the sake of completeness, I show you the full content of my lecture, but today we want to concentrate on network structure for distribution and transport. And now let's get started with part one, network structure for distribution. Here you can see to my right side a typical radial network. That means the power and the energy come from the left side through the transformer and are then distributed to each individual consumer of the electrical energy which is connected to these horizontal stripes. These are the so-called ring main units or local substations. And now the fault happens. A short circuit happens and this means a lot of current comes from the transformer through this feeder to the fault point and consequently the protection is started and the fault passage indicators pick up. After a short time, protection trips this feeder and the electricity supply is lost to anybody. Now operations come in. The operational staff will open one circuit breaker, the last one from which downstream there is the fault and re-energize the feeder in the substation and this means everybody is happy except those at the end of the feeder. So 50% of the line is on power, 50% is out of power until this fault is repaired and that may take quite a time. So what to do against this undesirable situation? The solution is the so-called open ring structure. What do we see as an open ring structure? For the open ring structure there are two lines that are connected Please look to the bottom right. There is one additional connection between these two lines and there is a normally open circuit breaker in color blue. Now let's run again the same sequence of the fault. The fault happens, fault passage indicators and protection pick up. Protection trips out this feeder and now operations come in again and they open the last circuit breaker before the fault point, re-energize this and this is the status as is before. But now we have an additional chance to provide electricity to the residual two substations. So first you open one circuit breaker behind that fault and reclose this normally open circuit breaker so that now the energy supply to the residual half of this previously faulty feeder is now supplied from the residual spare feeder. This is called the open ring structure. You may have, in addition to this quite safe supply, very sensitive loads, for example, a hospital. So when the fault happens, like here, it does not help that you have a ring structure because you do not get the energy to the lower level of voltage, to the low voltage side. So now what happens here? We have a fault, and the sensitive loads are not supplied anymore. At this very moment, the emergency generator is started up. The normally supplied to the sensitive loads is interrupted and the emergency generator re-energizes the sensitive loads. So this means in this hospital, to take an example, the sensitive loads are supplied with a very short interruption and the rest, unfortunately, has to wait till repair work has been done. Now we come to part two, network structure for transport. Transportation means bringing electricity over long distances, usually in high quantities of power, in terms of hundreds of megawatts. So here you can see, to my right side, you can see a section of the Central Eastern European network, and you see my home country, Austria, is in the red circle. And now let's concentrate on the quality and the reliability of the supply to our capital Vienna. In this circle you can see Vienna and now this is expanded. So the yellow arrow shows where are 2.5 million people who wait for electricity and as you can see we have altogether seven lines on 400 or 230 kV and these lines are normally consistent of two 
systems. So these are the typical overhead lines you know when you drive across the countryside. This means now altogether these seven 400 kV lines together are 14 systems and each system is of high capacity. So this means the capital of Vienna, like any other large aggregation of population or industry, is very, very, very reliantly supplied by electrical energy. So this was today's lecture about network structure for distribution and transport. I hope you enjoyed this and please stay tuned to my lecture series. Thank you very much.